Spring 2014 kit and what I carry. Twenty fifteen bushcraft get. But today uh, I'm going to talk about what is in my backpack uh, and what I'm carrying. No military IFAC here right, right now. Up. Some duct tape. Is a right in the rain journal. Analogy. I'm not sure how well you guys can see. I carry here is uh, what is this? The Seagull by I can't even remember who. Uh, MSR. So guys, hopefully you enjoyed that quick little look at the past three years worth of spring bushcraft kits. I really want to do that just so you guys could kind of see where my kit has come from or, you know, where it is today as opposed to any of the amount of years ago. And now that I've been doing this for a few years, I thought it might be fitting to finally show you guys some of the previous works or some of the previous kits that I had. So you guys are probably also wondering why this is on a weird camera or not the usual camera. And that is because I'm on my phone because I finally want to show you guys what exactly this pack looks like, you know, fully specked out, including the camera. I hope the lighting's coming across well. My phone is kind of struggling with this interesting lighting. But let's get into first, before we go into anything else, just the camera equipment so that I can break out the real camera and show you guys uh, on that one the rest of the kit. So in here is the camera bag and this is what where all the camera equipment is stored and this is fully padded. Like I've said in previous videos this pouch here never has anything in it other than padding and back here has quite a bit of padding as well. So it's fully protected from any bumps or you know drops anything that might happen to it. It's also padded from the underneath of it. But starting off, what you guys are seeing immediately in here is my Nikon D5200. And this is the workhorse camera of my uh, entire project, just the entire uh, channel. And that is the workhorse. It has been for a few years, and that's primarily what takes up most of the space. As for the lens on here, it's just a really super basic 18 to 55. Yeah, 18 to 55, but I rarely ever use it for anything but 18, because 18 I find really Really works well for most camera stuff. So other things in here, and it's really kind of tricky to see in here because the lighting's kind of dark, but the other thing in here is, or the other camera in here is the GoPro Hero 4 Silver, and uh, this is how it's currently rocking. It is rocking as well a tripod mount. I apologize for any wind, by the way, because I'm not... <laughs> so oh, this one yeah. is using a tripod mount currently, but I have a few other mounts in here, and this thing is just keeps getting dark. But anyways, the next thing is uh, I also have food in here, and I just have a few snacks in here and the reason why I keep snacks in here is because this pouch really never changes as far as whether I'm hiking, hunting, bushcrafting, backpacking. This pouch pretty much always stays the same with the amount of camera equipment and I like to just throw in these uh, few snacks just in case I'm hungry or you know whatever and I need them. Uh, it's nice to have them. So down in here I also have a chest mount and it's kind of hard to see. I'm not going to fully pull it out but there's a chest mount for the GoPro and then in this bag is the shotgun mic for the uh, main camera, the DSLR. And that is just a simple Tac Star shotgun mic. It's really cheap, but it's actually really, really good. I did not realize how good they are, but that is what's been primarily doing all my audio for most of the videos you guys are seeing. So it works very well, especially for being around a $20 uh, shotgun mic. It's actually really good. So anyways, guys, that is the camera pouch and what is in there. And so now I'm going to hop over to the Nikon and also go into the mention because for those who I know are going to be wondering where in the world my tripods are, the tripods are actually in here and I'm not going to show them because to show them would be showing you guys some other stuff that I want to wait until I actually dig into that pouch. So guys, now we're back onto the main uh, tripod and camera. This is a lot better camera. <laughs> So anyways, before we get into the backpack, I want to cover the only things I'm carrying on me. And this is one of the reasons why my pack has changed up so much that I'm actually on body, aside from carrying the backpack itself, on body, I'm only carrying my knives. So I'm going to go over what's on my body or just the knives. So starting off, I have two 
uh, neck knives and the first one is a more Eldris and keep in mind guys this video does not serve as a review of any of this equipment I'm just going over what I'm carrying so the Mora Eldris is number one and then number two for neck knives is the LT Wright Camp Mock. Once again, I do love these knives, but it's not a review, so I'm not going to be talking about how great they are, or how much I love them, or anything like that. And then lastly, these are the two neck knives. I'm also carrying a belt knife, and right now the belt knife is the Pull Force Prepper 1. So those are the knives that are I'm rocking on body when I'm bushcrafting for different bushcrafting tasks. For different bushcrafting tasks, and just overall how I'm doing bushcrafting stuff. The next thing I want to cover is on the exterior of the backpack. So things that are not in pouches but hanging off the backpack. And I only have one thing for the spring and that is as it's beginning to warm up um, I'm only carrying or I don't really need the heavy duty tarp. The heavy duty tarp you guys saw uh, throughout the winter. That was a great tarp for the winter. It was thick, it was big, it was heavy duty but it was really um, just not very it's very heavy and it's not very needed for the spring or summer because now it's beginning to warm up and become warmer I need that heavy so duty I, really tough tarp and as well i don't need a tarp that's as large either because i'm not trying to fold it and get it into the snow because of course in the spring i mean right now we have snow but we'll be losing the snow hopefully soon at least it'll be warming up hopefully soon uh, so i won't really be needing that heavy duty big uh, burly kind of tarp i can run a lot lighter weight tarp like the one you guys have seen in a lot of my new videos that's why i don't have a tarp running on the exterior of this and then once again the only thing i have running on the exterior of this is a, my gba scandy forest axe now this is a axe and i'm not i'm definitely not pulling it out of like i'm not done using it so i'm trying to say i i am going to continue to use this but for the most part i'm going to begin to kind of phase it out at least temporarily because as a shelter trying, that i was building i didn't even bring my axe on that outing and with with the saw that I'm going to be showing in here and a tarp, you know, when, now that I'm bringing 90 to 95% of my shelter, I really am not finding that I need some big axe to help make my shelters. And that was the primary reason why I carried such a large axe like this, was to assist in the building of large structures or large crafts. So now that I'm no longer really doing that too much, this may be phased out in those particular outings where I'm no longer building large crafts. So this may or may not be as much used in the spring. I'm going to see more. I still don't want to get rid of it because I still love having this big axe and it gets work done so fast. Uh, but, you know, if I'm just not using it, this thing is three pounds that I don't need to bring into the woods. So maybe this might be phased out, you know, at least temporarily, definitely not permanently. And I'm not selling this thing. It's still really awesome. But that is just something I want to note. And if you guys don't see it throughout the spring, don't be like, you know, where did it go? So that is partially something that may be phased out. Uh, another two things I kind of actually forgot about them is on the front of this pack. Uh, I am running the SWC SAT on this side and then I'm running the, uh, what is this, recycled firefighter lanyard on this side with a, you know, H&K style clip. That's really nice to have when you just want to clip something to the exterior of your backpack and just run it there. Something like a bottle, a water bottle. It's really handy to have that if you want to run your water bottle right next to you for a temporary amount of time. So, really nice thing to have. That is everything that's attached to the outside of this yeah. backpack. To get started with the different side pouches and different pouches that are all along, along this. this pouch. So in here, I showed in the first uh, footage, and once again in here, I've really not changed this much, but this is just where I generally carry all my cordage. You guys can see lots of paracord in here. There should be around 100 feet broken into a bunch of different lengths, and that's just generally what I use for attaching things to this backpack or using it to bind things. A lot of the shelters I use use taut lines and different lines that you run across them up. So for. it's really important to have that a uh, loss of cordage and to be able to expand to different sizes should I have to run something a really long distance or should I need to wrap something around a lot. So have them, like I said, around 100 feet in here in different lengths. And that's really never going to change because paracord is so versatile and I don't really have any aspirations to 
change that. So the next thing here is, and I hope you guys can notice, if you guys can notice, if you guys checked out my camping, uh, my winter camping setup, I believe I went over this, or winter and spring camping setup, I went over this and that I'm now making the IFAC a definite part of this pack system. And so I just went over and converted this uh, zipper pull to red or bright red so that anyone who got to this pack or anyone I was with or myself included would automatically know that this pack here or this pouch here has some kind of medical kit. The reason it. I'm carrying an eye pack is because, you know, with bushcrafting, you work with axes, guns, saws, knives, a lot of things that, should anything go wrong, can really, really damage you. So it's nice to have a heavy duty eye pack that has things like Israeli bandages, that has things like cat tourniquets in it, stuff that can handle heavy duty injuries. So that is what this is, and that's all I believe I have in here. Yeah, that's all I have in here is just the next side also is the gray zipper side, and this side's pretty much always been for ammo, and gray is kind of for guns, as I like to think. And in here, I have some hand warmers still, just because it is kind of cold out here, and I think I have some toe warmers. Yeah, I have one thing of toe warmers and then two things of hand warmers. I also have an emergency ferro rod should I need it, but primarily what's dedicated in here is things like ammo. So I have some mini mags, some CB shorts for the 22 that I run, and that is what's rolling in there. And once again, that's pretty much the same. I haven't really changed it because that system works for me really well. The next part that pretty much never changes is my fire crafting bit up here. And that's still the same in here. Nothing's changed. This is my fire crafting pouch. It has everything I need in it to start many fires, many different ways. Uh, anything from flint and steel kit is in here, ferro rods, uh, to different natural things like uh, cramp balls and chaga, and a whole bunch of different natural uh, tenders. So that's what's in here. Uh, in this pouch up here. Now let's actually get into the bulk of it and what most has or what's changed the most and that is in the primary pouch here. We see a few things just to get it out of the way. This is a gorilla pod for the GoPro. Obviously the GoPro had a tripod mount on it and that's primarily for use with this gorilla pod. So I'm gonna get some of this stuff out of here because this is quite a packed place. But the next thing is the grabber survival blanket. And what I really like to do with this is run it in unison with this tarp here. And so what I'd like to do with this is because this has a mylar side to it and a more rugged tarp side to it, is use this as a ground cloth and lay this over the snow so I have a reflective slash uh, heavy duty reflective blanket to essentially lay everything on and then I'll take this which this is a underground quilt company or UGQ winter dream 11 and I'll run this over top of me in many different ways uh, I'll run this over top of me to protect me from wind snow whatever and then I'll run this underneath me as a ground cloth to keep everything once again, either everything in my little shelter area dry and it also, like I said, reflects heat really well because it has a mylar side to it. So I really like this as a ground cloth and running it with the UGQ Winter Dream 11 is really awesome. So that's kind of my shelter setup because like I said, now I'm actually carrying a shelter in this setup. So instead of building them, I will set up these and I might use like a couple of runners, like, you know, a few wrist thick trees to help support the tarp though i think if you set your lines correctly with this and tension them right in all honesty this thing just sets up just with lines alone so it's really awesome so the next thing is i'm running a military bible and i just dropped it but a full-on military bible and this is the complete bible some military bibles are just like psalms in the new testament or like psalms proverbs in the new testament but this is the complete bible and it's really compact and i find that's awesome it took me a while to actually find one of these so that's why i have not had it previously is the silky big boy and once again this is largely replacing the axe poor axe it's largely being replaced by the silky big boy and the silky big boy it just chomps through wood so fast and so well i really like it and once again if i'm running something like my shelter setup you see here 
I just don't really find that I need to get a lot of large timber or lumber to use. So with this, it works very well, very fast. And in addition, what I like about saws more than axes is I can more easily craft things like dovetail joints and do more precise crafting work with a saw like this as opposed to an axe. So that's kind of why the axe is falling out of favor, which sounds really hilarious because I think even last year I was like, I'm never going to switch to a saw. You know, screw saws. Saws are terrible, but really they are not as bad as I first thought and have a lot of use to them that I'm really beginning to realize. So that's the Silky Big Boy. Now the gun, like I said, everything was all inclusive in here. I'm still running a gun, make no mistake. And this one's in a trial period. And this one is the Henry uh, AR-7 survival rifle. This is of course the camo version of it. And I'm really excited to be testing this uh, through the spring, summer, fall, and into into even next winter and so I'm definitely be playing around with this thing a lot and I'm hoping that this can really replace the lever action that I run from Henry and the fact that I really like how this fits in the backpack and of course obviously the lever action can't even break down and fit in a backpack whereas this as you guys can see sits quite nicely in this backpack it is kind of heavy in the backpack but it's still really awesome and I'm really wanting to try and get into this whole fact of being able to carry most of my gear in the backpack and treat my backpack essentially like a headquarters a mobile headquarters is kind of how I like to think of it where you know I'll get to one destination stop set up the shelter and you know set up the backpack there and then from there go out and you know do hunting with the AR7 or do crafting with these different pieces like axe saw knives and or you know do cooking with the different things I'm about to get into so I'm really trying to see if I can make this backpack an all-inclusive and really nice headquarters essentially like a mobile headquarters uh, I also really like the fact that this breaks down for the whole fact that I'm not showing the entire world except for right now <laughs> which is kind of ironic, I'm making a video, but for the most part, I'm not showing the entire world that I'm armed, so it allows me to get into my place. No one knows that I have a gun on me, but I do still have a gun on me. That's what I really like about the AR-7, and definitely expect to see more on this. Uh, I have a lot of questions on see how well it will perform in the uses I'm gonna put it into, and this thing will definitely be getting tested for sure here in Alaska. So that's what this is. I'm not really gonna remove this from here because it's really heavy, and if I set it down here in the no, it will sink. So I'm just going to leave it in here. So the next thing is a bandana. And I've talked about, if you guys watched actually the video that I uploaded earlier this week about the seven survival lessons I learned, I generally actually always have a bandana on me just for the fact that you never know when it's going to get smoky. I mean, it's winter right now, so it's slash spring, so it's probably not going to get smoky. But I like to have a bandana on me just because you really know, you never know when it's going to become smoky. And I really like how easily you can breathe in smoke with even something as simple as a bandana. Not to mention the bandana has many different survival uses alone from that breathing kind of respirator. So the next part is the in the pack knife. And as I've mentioned several times, uh, I do so much testing of gear now that I like to have at least one to two knives in the backpack alone for testing and so that I can carry in more knives because it's really hard to carry like four knives, like four full on knives on you. So it's pretty crazy. So I threw a few in the backpack and one that I'm definitely testing and it's a definite pack knife right now is the Schrade SCHF 42D. And so that is a current pack knife right now. And now finally kind of winding it down, getting into the cooking gear. So for those who have been around probably now familiar with the fact that I run stainless steel Nalgene. This is a 38 ounce. This thing is fully loaded with water. Hopefully you guys can hear that. Um, so that's a stainless steel Nalgene 38 ounce running inside a Glacier, GSI Glacier cup. And that's what I'm running for the cup and the bottle. And then I'm once again running a very old, very quintessential MSR Siegel or stowaway pot. Once again, this is the forget I think it's a 675 milliliter I never remember how much that thing holds but I'm pretty sure it's the 675 milliliter version of the Siegel stowaway you can get them in like 1.1 liters as well but this is the smaller one so that's the uh, this pot I'm running and pretty much all the cooking gear I'm running 
and now set up with that. Of course, the pot, I totally forgot to mention, has some Ritz crackers and uh, Starbucks Via instant coffees in it for making coffee in the cup and the crackers are just awesome. So hopefully you guys have enjoyed this look. I think I've covered it all. I do not, because it's spring and it's still a little chilly, I'm not running a water bladder yet. I generally tend to start running the water bladder more into May when it's actually above freezing at night. If it's below freezing at night, I will not run a water bladder because once again, if it's below freezing really at all, the entire system will just freeze up, especially if it's not on your back. So like when you're sleeping, overnight you know though you may be warm in all your insulation the backpack slash the water bladder will not be warm so until it starts becoming uh, above 32 below or not 32 below but once it gets above 32 above <laughs> that's a little bit complicated to say uh, is when I generally start to include the water bladder but it's still not hit that point so the water bladder is not in here yet uh, so anyways guys, that is a very detailed look at my kit. Hope you guys enjoyed the nice blast from a pat from the past uh, look at some of my other years of different equipment and once again I'm always trying to stay new and testing new ideas and once again that's what I'm doing with this AR7 and you know really having a self-contained unit I'm actually quite impressed with myself not to talk myself up here but I'm really quite impressed that I was able to put pretty much 90% of the gear I mean you could even consider the pack knife being the knife I mean this thing is a very set up backpack and I'm pretty sure you could give this backpack to just about anyone and they would absolutely be able to survive and bushcraft quite happily with it. And that's kind of my whole goal is to set up this HQ that's mobile, I can move around, and it has everything. Because what I've learned over the time is, you know, I can still assemble this rifle and carry it as a rifle in my hands. But what I've learned even with the rifle is that, you know, I'm constantly like get, banging it up against things. It's always in the way. It's something that I have to factor. If it's not broken into a backpack or on a backpack, I have to factor carrying that. So that can limit me. You know, if say I have to move a log, you know, from here to here. Well, if I have a gun on me and I can't break it down, you know, that is one hand that's automatically filled with that gun. So even, you know, something like a gun, I really like the fact that I can break it down, put it all in my backpack and just move the backpack from point to point wherever I need it to be. This is the mobile HQ that I know I can bushcraft with. I know I can survive with it. You know, I have no fears of this pack and its equipment letting me down. And so some of it's still obviously under testing and that's the ultimate goal I'm trying to achieve here. And if you, once again, if you guys have any suggestions, please share them, you know, for whatever gear you'd like to see added, or, you know, if you guys want to see anything in particular added, definitely let me know. And as always, don't forget to comment, like, share, subscribe, definitely share. It's really appreciated. Um, I have gotten Facebook pretty under control for sharing, but still, if you guys can share, that's really awesome. And it really helps me get this word out about my channel. So, so anyways guys, that's it for now and I'm out.